Today is Monday, June 27th, 2022. It is day 343 of web development. And last night, while I was waiting for my blender, my blend to render, I started watching this video um, by Tech with Tim. Um, so he's basically showing us how to make a more of like a back, like he's focusing more of the back end of web development, um, which I need to start getting into because I've just been doing front end for 342 days. Um, but I think I'm gonna start getting into a little bit of back end. I'm not sure that Flask, I mean, he uses Flask here, which is kind of like a framework for, um, what is it, I don't even know, I don't know. Um, it's a framework though. Um, so I don't know if Flask is the thing that's up to date. I've heard of like React, I don't even know. Um, but I'm just gonna start with the basics because we gotta start somewhere and so I'm really, I got up to watching, what, 24 minutes of it last night? Um, and so I'm just gonna start again and, um, I could go a little faster because I really kind of understood everything he said so I don't really need to, like, watch it, watch it, but, um, yeah, so I downloaded the VS Code because that's what you don't mind this render over here, it's still rendering. Um, let me just search it up. Because if I even click on this blender thing, it's going to crash. So let me just not even use the minimize button. Okay, VS Code, Visual Studio Code. Alright, um, let's see. So wait for that to load up. This is my second, I don't even remember. Oh uh, yeah, it's my second time downloading VS Code. Um, I don't think I ever used it though. I think I just played around with it once. But I don't really remember <laughs> Um, and it was literally this year that I downloaded it, but I think I deleted it. Is it not going to pop up? Okay, there we go. Alright, so let me just go here and pin it while it's up here. Pin the taskbar. Alright, so should work. Alright, so this is really pretty. Okay, um... Oh yeah, I think that's what I had. How do I work this? Um, I don't want... How do I... Okay, delete yourself, please. Huh? No, don't save. See, I know I had something. Alright, um... So I'm just gonna go to... Where is my stuff? Did I delete my stuff? This is crazy. Okay, it's right there. So we'll just go here... Um, and just kind of copy his stuff here. So, what does he have? He has open editors, um, Flask web app tutorial. So, I guess I'll call this <laughs> same thing. Um, are you serious? No, I thought it said new folder. Explore. Okay, how do I go to the actual files? No, no. File, new file. What? I'm so confused. Um, new, can I do new? Add a folder to workspace. No! How do I actually... Can I add a folder through here? I'm so confused. I don't know how to run that. I don't know, I, I don't know how to do this, by the way. Oh, I'm so dumb! It's... Wow, sir, I, like, every day, every day I get smarter. Um, I have to go to, I have to use a folder through my computer, duh, because this is locally. Okay, um, so I'm going to create a new folder here, and I'm going to call it, um, Flask Web App. Um, so it's going to be that, and then over here, I can go open folder, I can go to my desktop, which is where I have it, and open it here and select folder so it should pop up there see i can figure things out yay all right do you trust the authors of the files in this folder there's literally no files in the folder but okay um code provides features that may automatically as you files in this folder if you don't trust the authors you work on entry oh yeah the guy mentioned that he was like debug equals true okay whatever um I thought the parent folder desktop. 
Okay, so this is so beautiful. All right, so um, have flag, flask web app, right? I'm gonna just go, where is my stuff? Why does it keep doing that? You know what, I need to delete something. Let me just delete the chat. There's a chat? I didn't even know there was a chat. Hello? Hello? No? Okay, I guess not. Really? That's great. How about I unpin this from taskbar? There we go. Um, okay, so just trying to follow the outliner that he has here. So he has um, a website folder, a static, templates, and that's it. So he has three folders. So let me do another folder, call it website, another folder, static, well, um, folder here. Static. No, another folder here. Call it. No, 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 no. Templates. Um. Okay. So, in templates, um, I believe. Let me go back to where he sets this. Up. Does he have a? He does, doesn't he? Um. Set up directory structure. Okay, let's just watch this. Okay. Folder that's going to store our application. So I've just made one on my desktop. I've called it Flask Web App Tutorial, and I've opened it up here in VS Code. Now feel free to use whatever editor you want. I am using Visual Studio Code. It's just my preferred one right now for this type of project. Uh, but you can use Sublime, you can use Atom, you can use PyCharm, whatever you want. doesn't matter. Um, just you know, follow along with the steps that I'm doing here. So create a folder. And then the first thing we're going to do is just kind of set up a little bit of a project uh, directory or kind of some structure here just so that we have all the files defined already. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a folder inside of this folder. I'm going to call it website. This folder is going to store all of the code for our website, right? Then I'm going to make a new file. I'm going to call this file main.py. And this is the file that we are going to run when we want to start our web server or start our web. Okay, so I kind of want to take a little bit of notes because I don't want to forget this. So I'm going to use Notion for the first time in literally 5,000 years to actually take notes. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, let's do that. Um, I just don't know where I'm going to put it, though, because I don't think I've taken notes in such a long time. Oh, wait, obviously in the web development log, right? Um, duh, sorry, come on. Um, let's see. Let's see, let's see, let's see. What day is it today? Day three... Three, I forgot what it was. I have it right here. J343. Doesn't even matter. Okay, this thing is not even loading. That's great. I really want to know. Is it my internet? Is it my CPU? My GPU? Like, what's going on? What's wrong with my computer? Because it's not the storage. There is storage here. J343. Okay, let's do that. J343. What's today's date? The 27th? So, yeah. Okay. Um, so, I'm going to just open that up. And while, I'm, while that's waiting, I'll just go here and just copy the link so I can paste it down here. So, I can have it there as a citation of what I used for this video. Because at this point, I don't even use materials used anymore. It's, it's so tedious. Um... All right, so what am I doing again? Oh, I was gonna write notes. Oh, my notes. Okay, yeah, I knew that. Okay, let's go here. So for my notes, um, so I have main.py is basically the file. What did he say? I don't even remember. <laughs> okay, let me go back. Webpy, and this is the website, right? Then I'm gonna make a new file. I'm gonna call this file main.py. And this is the file that we are going to run when we want to start our web server or start our website. Now inside of website, I'm just going to make a few folders. We'll talk about these as we get to them. The first one is going to be called static. And then the next folder inside of website is going to be called Wait, template. Wait, so main.py, I want to, okay, so I want to run this file when I start my website. Okay, that makes sense. Or server. Are you serious right now? Okay, I'm about to just, like, what am I, what can I not? Like, this is crazy. This 
This is crazy. Are you serious? Can you please just work? I don't, I can't do this anymore. Whenever, oh my god, how much more do I have to wait? I'll just, I'll just wait forever, it's okay. I'll wait forever, because I have forever, yes. <sighs> it's literally not saved even, like what? Is it the internet? Is it because it's raining right now? going on I think I'm gonna restart my, oh I can't restart my computer because I have a render going on that's great that's amazing um great so this thing is is horrid so you know what forget notion because girly has no time to wait right now I'm just gonna use my notepad on um my laptop so that's what we're gonna do if it ever wants to show up it's nicer now than what it used to be. All right, so um, main.py, I wanted to run whenever I, whenever I want to start my website or server. Okay, then let's see. And then we make a few Python files. Uh, and again, we will jump into what all these mean in a second. So we're going to say underscore, underscore, init, underscore, underscore, dot pi. Okay, so file, underscore, underscore, init, underscore, dot pi. What is this, a class? Now, one in it, Sarai, you're so smart. Come on, rename. There we go. This file right here has two underscores before the init and two underscores after. Make sure you don't only have one. And what this is going to do is it's going to make this website folder here a Python package. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, I remember that, because then he imported a function from there. Where is my notepad? Oh my god, this is crazy. I cannot deal with this anymore. Can I just, can you just please work, like, it's not that hard, like, get your life together. Why is it opening more? I'm done. I'm literally so done. Can we please? Pin into taskbar. Let me just get rid of Figma. Let me get rid of, um... Photos. Okay, there we go. And parse hub. Unpin from taskbar. And then this too. It never does it. Jesus. Okay. Um. So this init underscore underscore dot pi file is basically wherever if. This file is placed, that's not how you spell place, under a folder. That folder is called, is, no, turns into a Python package. Python package. That's so sweet. That's so sweet. A woman was just, just came across here singing with her dog. That's so cute. You'll see what that means as soon as we use the package parts of it. Uh, but it essentially means that we can import this folder here. And whatever's inside of this init.py file will run automatically once we import this folder. Um, sure. Anyways, we're going to make a few more files and then we'll be done with kind of the basic setup. The first one we're going to do here is we're going to say auth.py. 
We're going to make another file here. We're going to call this one models.py. We're going to use this to store our database models. And then lastly, we're going to have a file called views.py. And this is going to store all of the main views or the URL endpoints for the actual functioning kind of front end aspect of our website. That just doesn't make sense. Because in HTML, you would literally just <laughs> use. It's funny to me because, you know, never mind. Never mind. Anyways, that's the basic uh, kind of structure set up here. So make sure yours looks something like this. And then what we're going to do is install some packages. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use a module called Flask. This module called Flask is just. Wait, can we go back to my file, please? Like, why are we here? Okay, thank you. Um, so where are we? We are in views.py, okay. Just a super lightweight Python. Yeah, frame. yeah, yeah. No to Django, whatever. Let's go on. Let's go on. Move it, move it, move it over here. Where is the video? Where is the video? Okay, let me get out of here. Not me searching a patch with just a letter, literally. Well, I was never taught that in school, in my defense. Like, they never showed us how to address a letter. Um, okay, Python website. Something like J is great, and well, that's why I'm going to show it to you, because it's just Mac. You could follow along with this. A command line here in VS Code, but if you opened up CMD on Windows or Terminal on Mac, you could follow. All right, so let me go back to here. Views that what can we get out of here? All right, so, um, where's the command line? Oh, I have to go. Oh, no. What did he say to do? I think I forgot a shortcut here. More simple than Django, and you can do things a lot faster with it. How do you Anyways, open up the terminal? Use... What? Excuse you, where's the terminal? Hello? Python terminal, where is it? Let me see. Excuse me. Oh, here it is. <laughs> okay. New terminal. Thank you very much. There we go. Alright, so, um, do I really have to write all of that out? Like, seriously. Oh, thank God. I did it for me. What? Install the latest PowerShell for new features and improvements. Okay, here okay, here we go. Did it for me, thank God. I was like so scared. I was like, do I have to write it out? Okay. Last we need to install the Python packages related to it. So, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use pip. I'm just in a command line here in VS Code, but if you opened up CMD on Windows or terminal on Mac, you could follow along with this. And we're going to install Flask. So we're gonna say pip install flask. Now, run this command. Uh, I already have this installed, so you'll see that all these requirements are already satisfied. But what pip will do is just install a Python package for us. Now, if pip doesn't work for you, for some reason you're getting pip is not recognized as a command, then what you need to do is go... What do you mean Python isn't installed? How is it not installed? Are you serious? Oh, come on! Uh, oh, why? I just use Google Colab, man. I'm not with this. Like, I still have to genuinely learn how to use, like, Python, like, set it up from the beginning. Like, I don't even know. I just... Uh, no. No, no. No, no, <sighs> Did it download? Like, how many times do I have to click on you, bro? Looking for Python with a different OS? Operating system. Hmm. <laughs> Why are you tired? I woke up so early so I could go to sleep early because I messed up my schedule so bad that I couldn't go to sleep early. And so I was like, I'm literally going to go to sleep at whatever time. It doesn't matter, but I'm waking up early so that I'm forced to be sleepy and I can go to sleep early as I should. That's how you do it, guys. Okay, is this thing going to hurry up or, or what? Let's go, guys. Let's go. Everybody, let's go. Come on, let's get to it. Vamos. The Python path is your debug configuration. In your debug configuration is invalid. Of course it is. So rude. Oh, come on, hurry up. Take your time. Just take your time. Just take your time. Anyway, just to, if this thing, okay, um, so I just kind of wanted to go back and kind of figure out what he's trying to say. So in my Flask web app, right, I have um, three folders. I have static, templates, and website. So I'm confused as to why there's a website folder and then a template folder because, like, wouldn't it, the templates be in the website? Like, what? Okay, anyway, 
whatever. Um, so the website has a main.py file, which is the file that I want to run when the server or when I want to start um, my website or like the server, I don't even know. Then templates would be, I have init.py. Wait, does this have to be under the website? This has to be under the website folder. Yes. Rude. Okay. Um, I think. And so what init.py does is that whatever folder it's in, it turns that folder into kind of like a library. And so that you can import it or you can import any functions within that file by importing website or something. I don't even know. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, makes sense because usually in Python, like inits are like classes, and then you can import certain functions from classes. And yeah, okay, anyway. Um, and then views something about HTML models. I don't even know, but I'm excited for it. And then off, this is um, stands for authentication for the login type of stuff. So I don't even know what static is, honestly. Um, is Python done downloading? Because I have a lot going on here. My computer, I think, is about to break. Okay. I keep saying computer, but it's a laptop. Um, we love that. We love terminology. We love knowing your stuff. Sorry. Okay. Um, yes, add it to the path. I don't know. Oh my God, my sophomore teacher. He. I remember him saying something about path. Something about it. A warning. I don't know. And he said not to or to do something. I don't even know. I don't remember. Something about path. Um, my sophomore teacher. My sophomore year teacher. I had Python 3.10 to path. I don't know, man. I don't know. Can I just install now, please? Like, thank you. Oh, come on. Oh. Vamanos, let's go. Okay. Everybody. Oh, by the way, PIP stands for something installer. <laughs> Package installer. PIP stands for process. PIP. It stands for package installer for Python. Yes, I knew it. See, I knew it. I was right. Almost kind of. Package installer for Python. So anytime you want to install a package, you use PIP. Um, I figured that out yesterday. I never knew what it meant. I was like, why are we using this weird random word to download packages? I was like, oh, it's package installer for Python. That makes sense. That's very intuitive. Could have figured that one out, sorry. But no, like always. Okay, anyway, um, can this thing hurry up, please? Okay, um, any other things we want to do, like research, maybe we should watch the video back. Go to the description. I have two videos, one for Mac and one for Windows, that will show you how to fix PIP. Now, they're not exactly called how to fix PIP, but they will go through the steps in each video. Uh, so watch either of those, depending on your operating system, and it should show you how to fix this command. Anyways, once we've done that and your PIP's working, now we're going to install another module. This is called Flask Login. Uh, you know, what's the difference between module and library? Like, what? Uh, so, flask hyphen login. Going to install that, and there we go. Now we need one more module as well. The last one is. Okay, let's do some research. What is flask login? Module. I need some description, please. 0 0.61? Oh my god. Okay, Flask Login provides user session management for Flask. It handles the common task of logging in, logging out, and remembering your user sessions over extended periods of time. It will store the active user's ID in the session and let you log them in and out easily. Let you restrict views to logged in or logged out users. Yes. Handle the normally tricky remember me functionality. Um, interesting. Help protect your users' um, sessions from being stolen by cookie thieves. Possibly integrate with Flask principle or other authorization extensions later on. However, it does not impose a particular database or other storage method on you. You are entirely in charge of how the user is loaded. Restricts you to using usernames and passwords, open IDs, or any other method of authenticating. Handle permissions beyond logged in or not. Handle user registration or account recovery. Handle permissions beyond oh, they're not. Interesting. 
So what are these? Are those the functions? Or I'm assuming because it has these. <laughs> okay. Um, is it done downloading? No. Okay, we can wait five hours. It's okay. So apparently that's what we're doing. That's what he's doing apparently. So he's installing Flask and he's also installing Flask the login module. Let's see what else. Called Flask and then hyphen SQL Alchemy. Uh, I think I spelled Okay, so Flask SQL um, Alchemy. There's a book called The Alchemist. It's very popular. Flask SQL Alchemy. Is this it? What? This is literally like, what is, okay. Flask SQL has an extension for Flask that adds support for SQL functions in your application. It aims to simplify using Zoom with Flask by providing useful defaults and actual helpers to make it easier to accomplish common tasks. can be cubersome. Instead, SEO Alchemy, the Python toolkit, is a powerful or mapper, which provides application developers with the full functionality and flexibility of SQL. Which is funny, because that's what I'm learning in data science now, which is, oh my god, do you see how God leads my path? Literally, he guides me up. He's like, how about you start an SQL a few days ago? And then I'm like, oh, web development, and then look what's here. Look what's here, SQL. Okay, Flask SQL Alchemy, Alchemy is a Flask extension that adds support for SQL Alchemy to classification. What is ORM? ORM is short for Object Relation Mapping. It's giving blunder. Um, sometimes Object Relation is short for Mapping. What's wrong with Oriented? Mm It's giving class. No, this is literally a class. It's literally a class. <laughs> oh yeah, it's actually a class. That's oh, okay. That's funny. Okay, that's funny. Sorry. Okay. Um. Nope. Can't understand any of that. I mean, I can, but I don't want to. Um. Use Flask and SQL. Can we not Flask? Yeah. Well, let's just practice. So calm down. Oh my god, I forgot I have popcorn. I'm gonna go ahead and eat some popcorn and watch a movie later because it's raining and I can't go bike riding now. <sighs> is the thing done downloading? No, it's not, is it? Yeah, no, it's not. It's great. Um, what else can I do? Literally, what else can I do? Um, oh, let's go to CodePen and play around for some stuff because I know I emailed myself. Wait, there was like these, um, I saw this code pen. Um, and it was like a modal type of code pen, and I thought it was so cool, and I think I'm going to focus on that. It's like different um, ways that modals can transition, which is so cool. Um, let me see, um, maybe trending? I just, I've never actually like explored code pen, um, other than, you know, using it. Um, but this is so cool, like, oh my god, it's such a dream, like, it's so beautiful, like, everything is just so beautiful. It's so amazing. Like, look at that. That's just beautiful. Oh my god. That's amazing. I mean... What? Like, how does he even get the shapes? He must have done, like, must he ha I think he either did, like, an SVG, because how does he get those individual shapes? Oh, he did do SVG. Ah, see? I'm getting good at recognizing things, guys. Oh, my God. I'm so proud of myself. Yeah, he must have done an SVG, right? Because he can't just take a picture and then have it, you know, do that. So he must have done, like, literally every single piece of those images of, like, for example, every single line is like a vector is a path right and then that's crazy that's amazing and so you click on it 
like you have a you have a div that shows up it moves up and then you have a div that shows up and then it it makes the, the thing i'm assuming it's like um something in the background like the black i think it's like a ball maybe something like that it's in the background it just moves to wherever position i click on that's amazing that is beautiful let me go see some other stuff so visually pleasing oh my god stop because that's so hot that's so pretty oh oh my god that's so pretty oh my god it's giving hacker that's so beautiful oh my god i haven't used these tags in a long time <laughs> Um, username, password, imagine, stop. Because I could, wait, I could, no way. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do, because I know for a fact that um, he actually does login page, right? Um, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to, after I finish the project, right, and I have my template and stuff, I think I'm going to try to do it. Um, I know I won't be able to do it by myself because I'm not going to remember, remember that's how it happens. I'm just not going to remember the, the, like the first time I tried it. So I always have to like keep redoing it with a tutorial. And then one of these days, I promise, I won't, it always happens like this. I'll be able to do it by myself. Um, but I think what I'll do is that after I get, you know, the, 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 what do you call it? The, the, the hang of things, I am going to design my own login it's kind of something like this this is beautiful it is just so beautiful it's like literally like the hottest thing i've ever seen in my life it's like so nice um okay let's look at something else wow i heard of 3js i mean oh there's so much to learn i've just been doing everything with css um, front end trends, benefits at, of uh, benefits of technologies. Made with love by Anna Batura. Love, love it, love it, love it beautiful let's look at front end trends really nice I'm assuming there's a transition here because it's going slowly um let me see front entrance benefits no way it's no way no nah, because this is different oh it's pug yeah I've never even heard of that Oh, I forgot to click on the links. Oh, well. Let's look at computer malfunction. Well, I didn't even know if there were links, but no. Nice, nice. View? What is view? I've never heard of that. What's view? Let's search it up. Oh, is it another version of JS? Jesus Christ. It's another framework. It's like view, no 3D. Ooh, this 
is pretty. It could be more plastic in our oceans and fish. Year it takes around, four, but it's not text. Oh, that's so beautiful. Wow. I have literally, I can't even. It's so beautiful. It's literally so nice. Wow. So nice. That's just beautiful. Okay, let's go back. Swiper, no swiping. Wow, and there's no JS involved? That's hot. URL. Waves. Position relative with 100%. Height 15 vertical height of screen, margin bottom, stone, pixels, and some Interesting. How do you do the shape? Oh, there we go. Well, not really. This is the animation use animation there's an animation property get out <coughs> i'm literally so uncultured like how did i not know this was a property that's really cool okay is this thing done okay let me get out of here go here Huh? Can you just run? What do you mean? Uh, Really? Really? That's great. That's amazing. I think I'm gonna need a break. I, I feel so like tired. I feel no, 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 because I know. Windows 8, but I just know that if it, if I go back inside my house, I'm gonna fall asleep. That's not what I want. I need to make it through the day. Um. <sighs> I promise that it's not me who watches these psychotic videos. Obviously, you know, because I've been here, right? I haven't paused the video, and you know that this is the last video I just watched, so obviously my sister is watching these. How do I remove from history? Oh. And I tell her not to use my account, because then it starts recommending me gotcha life, and whatever. And she watches, what do you call those things? Um, These uh, YouTube shorts. Yeah, we love that. 
you're using an earlier version of Windows, so Windows 7 or Windows XP. Don't tell me I had to make it. Don't tell me that I had to download it with the path. Spoil for this, uh, because some of the things I do aren't going to work in that version. Okay, so let's get started right away. Um, the first thing we need to do, if we haven't done so already, is download Python. So I assume most of you already have Python downloaded, but if you don't, just go ahead, head over to the Python website, slash downloads, and then download Python 3.6.3, or whatever the latest version is when you're doing this tutorial. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this, and we'll go through it here. So now that this is loaded up, if you haven't already installed Python, you're just going to want to make sure you click on this. I knew it. Here. it says I knew it. 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 My software teacher warned me about this. I knew it. I knew it was it. I knew. I'm going to cry. I'm literally going to cry. I just knew there was something about the path. Oh my God. How do I fix this now? Add Python 3 voices. Okay. How to. Hello. 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 Oh my God. How to, really? Can I not spell? Oh, come on. How to add, really? Okay, how to add Python 3.6 to path. Huh? Oh, that makes sense so oh so the path what it means by path it means this this is my path right and so when i add python 3.6 to the path then i can use python right with it okay that makes sense okay hopefully that makes sense okay yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so you can use the approach by downloading a recent version of python well obviously not manually add python to a windows pack so if you wish to stick with the previous version of python you may apply blah, 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 blah. i don't have a windows key i mean i do but it's broken <laughs> Navigate the Windows environment variable screen. Um, add Windows environment variable screen. Really? I don't have Windows R. So irritating. You know what? I'm just going to download Python again instead of going through all of this craziness. Add Python 3.6 to path. Now this is really important and this yeah, is going to save you a lot of time yeah, you think? if you do this. Yeah, you add yeah. to the path, okay? Yeah. Otherwise, if when you installed it you didn't add it to the path, I'm going to show you guys how you Please. can edit the path and you can add it in so you're going to do let me know what I show you next. Without using Windows. Okay, so I actually already have this installed. So I'm not going to install it here, but if you don't, then just go ahead and click install now. It's very simple. You can go through the process. Okay, so now that we've done that, I'm going to show you how we can install Pygame. So the first thing what? we're going to want to do is open up our command prompt. So this is our first test just to see if this works. Uh, and if this doesn't work, then I'll show you the next step later. So we're just going to start by typing pip. So pip. Uh, now you should see something like this come up. If you don't, don't worry, just wait uh, a little bit later. I'm going to show you how we can get this to work. So if this didn't work for you, you might get some an error that says pip is not a recognized command on Windows or something like that. Um, and I'll show you how we can how we can fix that. So now if this worked for you, what you have all you have to do now to install a Pygame is pip install Pygame, just like this. Uh, and pip is pretty much package installer for Python. Uh, and it's built into Python if you added that to the path. So if you do that, pip install pygame, then it should start collecting everything and installing it. So here we go, it says it installed pygame correctly. So now I'm just going to uninstall, uh, just so I can show everyone else how to do it properly. Okay, so if that didn't work for you, don't worry. If it did work for you, you can just click off the video <laughs> now, um, and it should uh, everything should be working in pygame. Alright, so now let's say that didn't work. Um, that pretty much just means that the path for Python is actually not in your uh, environmental variables. So what we need to do is we need to get to those environmental variables. So a way to do that is to just simply go to control panel. So we can just search Thank that Thank God. This, I love it. Oh, I'm going to cry. 
I think I'm gonna cry because I literally love him. Like, he's so, like, he doesn't use shortcuts or anything. He, like, goes straight to the point. He's like, here it is. So I can actually do it. Like, what if I don't have a Windows key? You know what I mean? Here, control panel. Load that up here. And we're gonna click on system and security. We're gonna click on system again. And then advanced system settings on the left side here. And now once that comes up, you should be on the advanced tab. And you're just gonna click on environmental variables right here. All right. So now we're going to scroll down until you see something that says path. I don't see no system and security. So here you can see if I drag my window out, mine's pretty long. That's just because I have three different paths. Um, um, now, I see security yours is probably only going to have one thing in it. Uh, it's probably just going to have this Windows apps uh, path in here. Control panel. Load that up here. And we're going to click on system and security. We're going to click on system again. And then advanced system settings on the left side here. Maybe and now system. once that comes up, you should be on the advanced tab, and you're just going to click on environmental variables right here. Alright, so now we're going to scroll down until you see something that says path. So here you can see if I drag my window out, mine's pretty long, that's just because I have three different paths. Um, now, yours is probably only going to have one thing in it. Uh, it's probably just going to have this Windows apps uh, path. It's not going to have the Python path if that other thing didn't work for you. So now we want to change this because we want to Wait, add something where to is... this path. So you just load that up here, and we're going to click on system and security. We're going to click on system again. Oh, here. And then advanced system settings. But on I the didn't left see side. that. And now once that comes up, you should be on the advanced tab, and you're just going to click on environmental variables right here. I literally didn't see that. So we're in system, but I don't see advanced anywhere, actually. Domain. Oh, here we go. Advanced system settings. Oh my god, I'm so excited. Okay, what now? Alright. So now we're going to scroll down until you see something that says path. So here you can see if I drag my window out, my that says path here. Alright. So now we're going to scroll down until you see something that says path. So here you can see if I drag my window out, mine's pretty long. That's just because I have three different paths. Um, now, yours is probably only going to have one thing in it. Uh, it's probably just going to have this Windows apps uh, path. It's not going to have the Python path if that other thing didn't work for you. So now we want to change this because we want to add something to this path. So you're just going to click on edit, and it's going to come up, and it's going to show you these three different paths right here. Now. You may have one, you may not have any. So let's say you don't have any of them here. Then what you need to do is you need to make a new path by just clicking on new and simply calling it path like that. And then you can type in the directory, which I will show you in this next step. Okay, so say we have this path already, we click edit, uh, and now you have one thing in here. What we need to do is we need to add the location of where your Python is saved on your computer. So you should know where it's saved. Um, this is the default location where I have it. So in app data, local, programs, Python, and then Python 36. Um, that's where my Python is saved. If you don't know where yours is, you can just go to Windows Explorer here and just search uh, throughout your whole C drive for it. It might take a second depending on how fast your drive is. You can just search Python like that and just wait for it to load up. Uh, it is going to take a minute, but it will show you where the Python directory is, so you can type that into the path of that. Alright, so now that we know where our Python directory is, all we have to do is click New, and then you can simply type it in. So, for example, I already have mine here, but you do C drive slash users slash, and then so on, filling in your Python path, so that it should end like this with Python and then Python 36. So I'm just going to delete that one because I don't need that. Alright, so once you've done that, now you're going to type the exact same path again. So you're going to click New, and you're going to do the exact same path you just typed in, which would be this one here. Except you're going to do slash script. Yo, I'm so confused. And then another slash at the end. So this is just so we can use the Python package installer, um, and you have access to Python. So you have two different paths, which are going to be in your command prompt. Okay, can you so just go back, please? Just go users, back. Users, slash, and then so on, filling in your Python path. So that it should end like this with Python and then Python 36. So I'm just going to delete that one because I don't need that. Alright, so once you've done that, now you're going to type the exact same path again. So you're going to click New, 
and you're gonna do the exact same path you just typed in, which would be this one here, except you're gonna do slash scripts, and then another slash. Oh, sl okay. Okay, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so new, paste that in there, and then something about slash scripts. Capital. at the end. So this is just so that we can use the Python package installer um, and you have access to Python. So you have two different paths which are going to be in your command prompt. Okay, so again I'll just go over that quickly because we went kind of fast. All you need to do is find the location of your Python, so the directory on your C drive, D drive, wherever it is. Um, type that in, so you just click new, like that, type it here, and then you're going to do the exact same path except you're just going to add scripts to the end and you're going to hit new again when you do that. So you have two separate paths and they should look something like the two I have up here right now. Once you've done that, you're gonna click OK, and OK again at the bottom. And now we're gonna go back to our command prompt to make sure that this all works. So now you can go to command prompt, and we'll do the exact same steps I showed before. You just type pip, install, high game, like so. It okay, so I click OK, and I click OK. And I exit out of here, and I exit out of here, and I exit out of here. And please, can you just run? So now, it should work. If it doesn't work, I'm taking a break, and I'm going to go eat cherry tomatoes, because girl needs her cherry tomatoes. Why? Oh, now my keyboard is not working anymore. <laughs> What's wrong with it? Of course. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna actually cry. <laughs> what more does it want from me? I'm just gonna literally download this thing, whole thing again because I cannot right now. Um, is this even it? It's not even it. Like it's not it. Hold on, let me go to my C drive. Okay. What DVD? Since when was our DVD? What is that? Like literally. What? I don't have a DVD. I haven't heard that word in such a lot. DVD, like please, like please. Mm -mm. All right, so just go here, type up Python. And this is gonna take a while. I just know. Alright, and while that does that, let me open everything back up again. So, control panel, go to system. Oh, it's loads. Okay, so go to system. And that should open up the settings and system. And then scroll a little bit down, and then I should see advanced system settings, and then it's going to pop up a little screen, and then I go to environmental variables, and then I'm going to go to the path, and then I'm going to click on edit. Okay, well, that does, I'm just going to... Hello, rude. Okay, just wait for the path. Not the path, the path will just show up somewhere. Hmm... <sighs> And 
any day now would be great. I could have gotten my cherry tomatoes, I know. Ooh, I'm so tired. Um, today is Monday, right? Oh my god. Any day now, won't you take me to Funky Town? Won't you take me to Funky Town? Come on up, come I literally haven't done anything. This has literally been like, I literally haven't written one piece of code. Nothing. This like this is ridiculous. Oh my god. How long is this gonna take? I think I'm gonna cry. Okay, I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna go eat some cherry tomatoes and take a break because I can't do this anymore. Bye. Alright, I decided I'm going to completely give up and I'm going to delete literally everything and I'm going to just install this again because I cannot do this anymore. Okay, so let me just literally get out of absolutely everything here. Um, let me just go to apps. This is so depressing. Or at least my blender files done. They're probably not done. I think I'm gonna restart my computer. I just can't pump this. Oh my god, it's not even halfway done. I'm so done with myself. Alright, apps and features. Um. No, oh my god. Why? Why? Great. It's amazing. This is just amazing. Alright. Uninstall. Uninstall. I should probably not have. Never mind, I don't even care. Okay, well that does that. I'm gonna go back to here and download it again. Okay, so it's uninstalling, that's great. It's gonna take five hours. 
All right. So currently, um, it's uninstalling, and it's been uninstalling for literally the amount of time I watched an episode of a show in Disney Plus. Um, and it's still uninstalling. So I decided I'm going to just skip that part and then come back to it. Um, because then I have to install it too, which is going to take another five hours. I'm just going to write the code, and we're going to go with it. Okay. So I'm pretty sure he starts at init.py. And then he, um, where's my stuff? Hold on. Let me use my video player. Where's my video? Okay, so he starts up here. So it says from Flask, um, import Flask. See, I don't like, well, how does that make sense? So from Flask, import Flask. Like, oh, it's a function. I don't even know. Is it a class? I don't know. So they want us to create um, a function called create app. And we're going to say app is equal. Anyway, um, so I'm creating a function called create app. So this function is going to create my app. So I have a variable app and I'm setting it to flask and the name. I'm not understanding that. So I'm just going to do research into it. At this point, I'm not going to go anywhere today with um, this. So I might as well just take my time and understand what I'm doing here because curl does not. Um, okay. So let's see. So name is just a convenient way to get the import name of the place the app is defined. Flask uses the import name to know where to look up resources, templates, static files, instances, folders, etc. That doesn't make sense. Um, yes, please. Can I download and install at the same time? All right. Um, a few special read only attributes are added to several object types where they are relevant. Some of these are not reported by the directory. Dir built in function. Name is set to the name of the current class function, method, description, descriptor, or generator instance. A module's name is set equal to main when read from a standard. This does not make sense. Um, setting the name of the Flask instance to app. And we want this for our secret key and decorators. Then the Flask instance name. Why is there a question mark? It's like what? I like that word arbitrary so it's kind of like because there's a lot of um placeholders i guess you could call it a placeholder too like arbitrary ab ar ar what i can't even say arbitrary arbor of uh, whatever bro um let me see how is there not more on this Why do we pass name to a class class? Because this is it a class? Yeah. When you learn Flask, you're told to create your Flask application instances by passing name. Oh, okay. So I'm assuming that Flask is a class, duh. And then you're creating instances. So instances, well, flat. Okay, so Python is an object-oriented programming language, and so. Um, 
classes are basically used to create objects. And so in this case, the object is a flask, but you can make, I guess, you can make instances of that object. And so like different, I guess, objects, I don't know how does that make sense, like different versions of them. So for example, you can have a class of car and then make different instances of car, of the class car that has like those properties, I guess. And so I guess it's the same thing. Um, so create my flask application instances by passing name as the first argument to the flask class. <sighs> Most developers do without thinking, without knowing what it achieves. Yeah, me neither. In this article, we're going to look at flask name in depth. By the end, you will not only have a full name, but we also know what to deviate from them. So what is name? Python sets the name variable to the module name. So the value of this variable will vary depending on the Python source file in which you use it. For example, in module name test.py that is located in the top level directory of the application, the value of name is test. Oh, if the test.py module is located inside a Python package called my package, then the value of name is my package.test. Is located inside a Python package, so that would be website in this case website and then the value of name okay would be it would be website dot main something like that because in this case our main file is main.py so our value of name would be main so we're saying take an instance of the main file there are two special exceptions with regards to setting name inside an init package construction model the value of name is the package name without init for example in my package and in a pod, the value of name is just my package. Right, this is where we are, because right here we're in the init page. So inside an independent system model, the value of name is the package name. So wouldn't it be website? Oh okay, wait no. Flash documentation on name. If you read the flash documentation, no thank you. The first argument to the flash class is called import name. It is described as the name of the application pa oh thank you what okay never mind i should have read it yes that's what i need no 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 wait no please don't reload all right so wait no go back all right so basically um it is the name of the application package name of the application package so in this case if I go back right so because website is going to be the package so I remember if I go to my notes app you see that he said if this file is placed under a folder that folder which in this case is website turns into a Python package and over here it's saying Um, over here it's saying that it is the name of the application package and so I'm assuming it's just website. Um, the documentation suggests that you usually create the Floss instance by passing name for this argument without going into any details on why. In the subsection titled about the first parameter there is a little more information about the purpose of the import name argument with the list of three different purposes for it. So find resources on the file system used by extensions to improve debugging information a lot more question mark question mark question mark um finding resources so this is actually easier to understand than it may seem initially the term resources in this contact refers to additional files made by the applications such as static and template files did you ever start to think about how flask knows where to look for these files man i don't even know what the files are yet like what <sighs> The way it works is as follows. Flask takes the argument passed as import name, which is the name of the imported package, and tries to use it to figure out what the root path of the application is by looking for the module object with that name. Right? Once it knows this path, it appends the static and template directory names, and that is where it goes to get those files. There is a function in the Flask helpers.py module called get root path that class uses to obtain the root directory of the application 
This function does all the dirty work of navigating the Python import system to locate the variable. For the following test, I'm going to use a microblog application featured in my Fast Meta tutorial. With this application correctly installed, I'm going to start a Python. Um, find with a few different values to see what the results are. From these examples, we can draw the rules. path. If you call Flask, okay, guys. Remember, first of all, hold on. This is an important, an important thing. I'm gonna take a screenshot, a whole screenshot. Make sure that you add Python 3.10 to the path. Where did my screenshot go? You know what? It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. I don't care anymore. If this thing wants to take five hours, it could do so. Okay, if you call Flask, passing the name of a package as an argument, then the root path of the application is the directory where the package is located. If you call Flask, passing the name of a module, what's the difference between a module and a package? Uh, then the root path of the application is the directory of the package where a module is located. There is a second usage of the import name argument. Flask has an obscure feature called instance folders, which are special folders where configuration files that are not under source control can be stored. This method to determine the location of the instance folders um, for an application is the same. The input name is used to find a root path, and then the instance server can okay, that makes sense. Improving debugging, no, no thanks. Um, I scanned the Flask source code for usage in a bunch of more What is blueprint class, which is blueprint. Oh, he uses that. Um, what is a blueprint class, which takes the blueprint name as the first argument and the import name as the second. The usage of the argument is related really to finding blueprint specific resources and it works the same way as application instance. Um, was this useful? A little bit, so I'm excited. But not really, because I still don't understand. <laughs> I know, so it's just like, like, so then if it, if it's supposed to be the, the name, of the mod the package or whatever then why don't we just put the name of the package instead of writing underscore underscore name like I'm like what create bookmark um I can't believe this day isn't over. I need it to be over so I can go to sleep. Um, what am I doing again? Oh, this. Okay, so what is the name of well, Have you ever asked yourself why when you create a Python Flask application, you pass name to the Flask class? Maybe I should, like, go back to classes because... <sighs> Alright. I definitely do want to start working with Flask, and this is true. I want to make it clear to those who would like to know more about it. The variable name is Flask's first argument when creating. Is this the Flask application for a Python Flask application? In this case, name represents the name of the application package, and it is used by Flask to identify resources like template, static assets, and the instance folder. The best way to understand this is to see in practice. So let's do it. Okay. A basic blah blah blah. blah. Create a new directory called Flask Example. Then inside that directory, create a virtual environment called a Venv or oh V and okay virtual environment and activate it. Okay, so um, new directory. Okay, this is a new directory like make directory mk directory. Okay, and then make a virtual environment. So then we have virtual environment activate. Separate tutorial is more about Python. Okay. Then update pip, okay. And install Flask in your virtual environment using pip. Okay. Now create a file called app.py directly inside the Flask example directory. This file will have the following content. So from Flask, import Flask. App is equal to Flask name. And then this is a decorator. So app root. And then that means that it's gonna have no, what does it mean it's gonna have no, um, it's gonna have an automatic thing, whatever. And then an example return the value of name is dot format name. In the first line, we import the Flask class from the class Flask module. module. 
So flask class for the flask module. Then you create your application and pass the name variable pronounced dunder name to the flask class. The flask root returns the value of name so we can verify its value when we run the flask application. So I'm assuming that the name is going to be equal to, isn't it going to be equal to the file name, which is um, flask example question mark. We have used the Python string format method. App? I'm confused, bro. So, oh, it's the variable? Nah, because I'm confused. So it's the variable that we set it equal to. That's what name is, really? The value of name is app the name of the current Python module. But I thought it was, okay, but that's that's a variable though. So what, what's a module then? What is the value of name when a fast application inside a pack? Yes, that's what I meant. Um, if we move app.py inside a package called example one, and it could be a package if it has an init file. Um, create a directory called example one under the flask example directory, create a file called init. See, see, I'm learning, I'm learning, bro. Okay. So then run the flask app by running flask run. The message you see in the browser when you access name is now example one dot app. Oh my God, what does this mean? Okay. So example one dot app. So example one was inside that file. So when a flask application is defined, okay. Because for us, it is defined in the init file. So, hmm. the value is example one. Yeah, this is what I meant. Oh, yeah. So for me, I feel like it would just be website. Although it's a file, not, it's a folder, not a file for me. Um, that is one. Right, so I think this is one, this one is the one that helps because I, well, he defined it in the packages, um, init.py file, but then I want to know how he got to print that string right there. Um, I should probably return that then. Is this done? No. Let me check on my blender renders. My blender renders. My blend renders. Desktop. Blender. Um, drink images. Let's see. Oh, at least it's halfway there. And a little more. Only 50 more to go. Actually, 44. There's more to go, but yeah. All right, um, where was I? Okay, so I created an app. I said app equal to flask, because flask is a class, and so I'm passing, I just need to see it. I just need to see the class so I can make sense of it. How, what are the attributes of flask? So it's supposed to create an application apparently, I don't even know. So it's a name um, is one of the first attributes. And so the name, right the name is supposed to be in this case a website i think i don't know let's see once this thing installs i could actually do it so i'm just gonna go here just copy this and then do return um and i'll do that once this thing figures its life out is it done thank god all right so at this point um can i just close this out and just new terminal please and thank you 
Okay, so I'm gonna wait for that to load. Okay. And so I have to do pip and self flask, but I just wanna make sure that it's video uh so watch you oh i probably have it are you serious there are those depending on your operating system and it should show you how to fix this command anyways once we've done that and your pip's working now we're going to install another module this is called flask login uh, so flask hyphen login are you serious we're going to install that and there we go now Where we need one more video? module as well the last one is called flask and then hyphen sql Alchemy, uh, I Hello? think I spelled that correctly now. Yeah, there we go. So I don't see it though. Where? Oh, it's right here. It's down here. Okay. Um. Yeah. So I just wanted to make sure if it was lowercase or not. So here, apparently, it's um, pip install glass. I'm done. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna go. I can't. This is, I can't do this. I cannot do this, bro. This thing really just said, ah, uh, no. No, 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 no. No, I can't. I really can't. Like, what does this want for me? Like, I just did everything I could. Like, I even downloaded with the path. Like, what? Um, extensions. Did I download pipe on here? I did install it, so, like, what do you want from me? What? Doesn't it work here also? <sighs> Let me see. I love this introduction to back-end web development. It's so welcoming. I'm so hyped. Note the sarcasm. All right, um, so over here, wait, don't I have to like open Python or something? I forgot. I don't know. <laughs> Python? Oh, uh, Python? How did I do this? I forgot. Hold on, Python. Here we go. I don't know why I bothered for the. Okay. This one over here, and then I think I could do pip install. I don't know if it's capital or lowercase. You see what I mean? Like, what? Flask. I'm done. I'm done. Like, what does it want from me? Like, literally, what does it want from me? Is it not pip install flask? It is. Is do I have to do like a space or something? Pip install flask. What? <laughs> Useless. Um. Pip install flask. This don't even be making sense. Oh my god. <gasps> no way. I just saw AMD. I just saw AMD 64. That's crazy. Okay. Um. Wait. Okay. Go. Go. Go here. Sorry. Okay. How to initialize Python in command um, prompt. Not me learning stuff. I love this. I literally love this. It's a mixture of everything that I love. It's literally data science also. Well, not data science, but what I do in data science. We use Python. Um, Alright, so what do I do here? Python, my script, apply. How do I... Do I have command? Can I give me one more statement? 
so do I have to do minus C? Is that what is is that what I'm being told right now? You're kidding me. You're kidding me. I can't do this anymore. I really can't. Um. Where is all right? Python. Is that what it is? I have to do. I have to write Python. Can I see? Huh? <sighs> I can't do this. <laughs> I'm gonna cry. So then what? Tell me, tell me why it ain't nothing but him. Alright, so execute Python code and command. Command can be one more statement separated by new lines with um, significant leading white space as a normal module code. If the version first a minute, current directory will be added to the start of whatever system path, allowing modules in that directory to be imported as top level modules, raises and adding event, blah blah blah. Okay. Um main yeah no it's not that's not what I want. How do I start Python from command line? Just open a command line or terminal and then type in Python. I literally did that. Rude. That's what I did. That's literally what I did. Like I have proof. Like it just go back 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute ago. Okay, command prompt. I literally said that. Okay, so it has to be Python 3 apparently. Really? Python. Python? Oh, it has to be capital letter. <laughs> Whoops. Sorry. Okay, um, so I guess if I make a variable call called like x and I set it equal to 3, and I make a variable called y and I set it equal to 2, and then I do x plus y, it would give me 5. Okay, that's good. That's Python. Okay, just making sure. And then now that I have Python installed, I can do, um, let's see, pip install, that's not how you spell pip install flask, and let's see if it works. It doesn't. <sighs> pip install flask. What about pip install flask? I'm done. I'm literally so done right now. Pip install flat. Like, what more does this thing want from me? I don't know what it wants from me. Um. Pip doesn't work in command prompt. To check the professor head to your path variable, press the windows not again. But I did click on it. Huh? Okay, so let me go back to control panel. See, I've literally done actually this is all set up because this is just crazy. Um type CMD and then press enter for the command prompt for a list of location of your path variable. Echo path and hit enter. Okay, I guess we could do that, maybe. Command prompt. Really? What does it want from me, like, literally? <gasps> okay. So, control panel, and then go to system. Where's system? Okay, here. Um, and then after system... You go to advanced settings. I'm so sick of this, bro. Well, this is this is great. Um, environment variables and then the path edit. I don't even know where anything is honestly. So, oh, it's Python three ten scripts. Um, but then how do I know is pip supposed to be? I'm so confused. Um, not working to show country because too many reasons. Pip installation path is not added to the system variables. If you have installed Python through prompt, then you need to configure pip path manually. Okay, pip is not recognized in the internal general command. Fix this issue, please. I'm running into a weird error when trying to install generic. No, 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 no. Blah, 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 blah. What could be causing this? This is what I tried. I get 
invalid syntax. Rude. I don't even know how to read that. Like, what? No, duh, dude, how? Please. There you go. What do you mean Python install package installer for Python? <sighs> to add it to the path variable, you can either use Okay. So I think I just need to add Energy path variable. I'm just gonna copy random code until something works. So great. Okay, hold on. Let me go get my own path, which is um this one, right? And then go back here. Where's my sites and stuff? So I'm just gonna paste that in there. Um, and then just put this up here in the beginning. Right before the C. Why is there a semicolon? This is not JavaScript, I'm so confused. I'm done. Okay, I'm gonna go take a break. I can't do this anymore. All right, I'm back from my little mini break. Um, I'm gonna figure this out, okay? I'm gonna figure this out. Um, see, if you don't struggle, you don't learn, right? Is it no? What the room? No. Well, duh, and VS. Are you kidding me? You're kidding me, right? Let me just start over, please. Terminal, new terminal. This computer is so slow. I think it's because I'm rendering, but <laughs> okay. Let's try this one more time. So pi um, m pip install flask. You see how I stopped typing five hours ago and this, still, and this thing is still going? It's giving Internet Explorer.
it's there girl i'm confused it's literally right there so like what i'm so sad like the thing is working <laughs> wait does he have it too he doesn't have class so that means it must have it must have worked hold on pip and star let me try pie game Python, no package, installer for Python. How do you install Pygame? Okay, pip, Pygame, collecting Pygame. Okay, it's lowercase. Okay, so let me try that. Where's all my stuff? I'm so confused. Command prompt, command. Okay, so pip install Pygame. Line one. Okay, so maybe it's Py. Um, pip install Pygame. And if not, it's going to be Python, or it could be capital Python. Um, pip install Pygame. If that doesn't work, let me see what happens here in the files. Reload. It's still not there, so I'm wondering how the heck did this get. 542? So it just happened? So it must probably be something that I did recently. So it's um it must have been something that I did recently, which is and I don't think I did it in VS Code. <gasps> oh my god, it worked! Stop! Literally stop. Literally, literally stop. Wait, so if I do pi and then I do um, I do pip install pi game. Would that also install pi game? Let me see. If I go. What the? What? No, 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 no. Go back. Go back. Go back. No. Uh, delete yourself. Delete yourself. Delete yourself. Huh? This is so interesting. So this worked, apparently. Don't you dare tell me that I could have done this with, um, that it's in the YouTube comments of the video. Because if it is, I'm done. I'm literally done. Yes, of course, because these people already have been coding with VS Code. <sighs> so, this is what worked for me, apparently, at least in VS Code, which not only worked in VS Code, but, I, but it worked, um, so I guess it's like a computer thing. So, that's so interesting. I love it. Alright, so let me just... Okay, hold on. Um, let me go back here. Move this over here. So I can do that without it. It's okay. I don't care. Could have told me that before. So my path is still wrong, but because I use this as a prefix, it's working out. I don't even know. Upgrade pip. Okay, it says to install upgrade pip setup tools. You're kidding me, right? Pip and pi installed. Pip installs pip. I'm too late for that. Um. Okay. Um. 
I'm gonna command prompt again. I literally haven't used my phone all day. It's crazy. Um, because my sister's had it talking to her friend all day. Okay, so okay, the command prompt is literally useless. So let's go to VS Code on the terminal. Um, so oh look, Pi Game also installed. So let me see. It should be here if I reload. Or not. Okay. Uh -huh. It does say that it downloaded though. But it's where? I don't even know where it is, man. Oh, it's in Python. Dot that doesn't even make sense. So it's working or it's not working? Okay, enter. <sighs> oh my god, this is so scary. Python was not found run without arguments installed from Microsoft OS. What do you mean? This is so confusing. This is all so confusing. <sighs> it's not as difficult. Like, it's literally, it's not that hard. It's not that deep. Like, it really isn't that deep. Okay, but at this point, this should work now if I run it. And there should be no problems. Unless there is at this point. Oh my god, please, for the love of god. What do you mean? I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Start debugging. What do you mean, Python? If I just do it, man. I can't. I literally cannot. Let me close everything out. So, hold on. Um, let me just close this out as well. Close this out as well. And then close this out as well. And this out also. Um, and this out also. And then go back here. What does M stand for again? Does it start to make command? What the heck? Meaning in Python. That's not useful Python, but okay. No, thank you. Okay, that's mean. okay. Sorry, you keep spelling it wrong, sweetie. Oh my god, I can't spell ever. Oh my god, I give up. I give up. No. Execute Python scripts from the command line by using module names rather than file names. <sighs> of course. Command. And then. Module. So M means module, so I'm doing pi. Okay, so we do run, new terminal. And I'll wait for it to figure its life out. The latest hard for new features and improvements. Alright, so it's pi and then m for module and then pip install class. But it already installed, so I don't know why this is like this. What's infected?
There's literally Pip in here, so I'm so confused. So I don't know if it's, it's not installed. And then it works here, but then I can't use it here. So someone tell me what's going on. Um, where's my, I just want to try one more time, the command prompt. Okay, so to get it to Python 3, so it's Python 3, and then wait a second. Okay, pip. loading that's great oh, I've been at this all day oh, okay forget about this let's move on move on move on go back to VS code okay so maybe instead of this, that's not what I said. Oh my god. New terminal. <sighs> this is so frustrating. Are you serious? Okay, so pi m pip install class. Okay, so that seems to be working. Um, let me close out this. Close out that. I'm just not sure why it's This did work for me. Interesting, pip3, what about that? Okay, so that did work. And if this here worked, what if I just remove this? Do I have to end it with anything? It's weird that I don't have to end it with a semicolon or anything. <sighs> let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Bring this up back pip install flask sql alchemy hit enter and we're going to install that now the modules will be just okay just one second so now it's pi m pip install sql oh no it's flask sql alchemy
And then there's also the flask login that I have to do. So I'll wait for that once I'm here. Pip version 22.04. So why nobody told me about this? What? Why did it tell me to go here? Okay, it's working. So, hold on. I needed that path again. How do I get there? Um... I'm gonna go back to scripts. Okay, I think I deleted it again. System. Hello? Where is it? Okay, here it is. <sighs> breathe, sir. I breathe. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Okay, environment, variables, path, edit. Let me just copy this path here. Close this out, close this out, close this out, close this out. Go here, go here. Paste that in here, and then I'm also going to paste that in there. Alright, um, now it should be... Okay, I have Flask installed, but the rest isn't, so I'm very confused right now. Python scripts. It says it's there. Okay, and then pi, and then m, um, pip install, flask, login, I think one is, um, I don't even know. I'm literally not even, oh, this is so depressing. Flask SQL alchemy. Yeah. Uh, so flask hyphen login going to install that and there we go now we need one more module as well the last one is called flask and then hyphen sql alchemy uh, i think i spelled that correctly now yeah there we go so pip install flask sql alchemy hit enter and we're going to install that now the modules we just installed or are for logging users in as it said and then SQL Alchemy is actually a database thing that we can use, so it's kind of a wrapper for SQL that just makes it much easier for us to create database models, delete models, um, add models, whatever it may be. You'll see as we go through the video. But install those three things, and in case you guys get lost in this video, anything's not working, there is going to be all of the code linked in the description down below. Are you serious? Uh, so you can check that out on GitHub, and, and you can copy all that code and everything. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to head into our init.py file, we're going to set up our Flask application. You're going to see how easy it is to do this. So we're going to start by saying from Flask, import Flask with a capital F like that. Then we're going to define a function. We're going to call this function create app. So we're going to say define create app like that. Oh now inside God. of here, uh, we're going to initialize our app. So we're going to say app is equal to, and then Flask, and then inside of the brackets here, underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. Underscore underscore name just represents the name of the file, or I believe it was actually the name of the file that was ran. Um, so you, you, you'll see, but regardless, this is just how you initialize Flask. It uh, doesn't really matter what this means, just type it in the brackets. Okay, so app equals Flask, <gasps> underscore underscore name, underscore underscore. Then what we're going to do after this uh, is we're going to set up one thing that we need for our app. So for all of our Flask applications, uh, we have this config variable called secret underscore key. And what this is going to do is this is going to kind of encrypt or secure the cookies and session data related to our website. Now, if you don't know what those mean, don't worry about it. You don't have to. Uh, but the idea here is that we just need to type some random string. It can be whatever we want. It could be a sentence. It could be one character uh, that is going to be the secret key for our app. Now, in production, you would never want to share the secret key with anybody. But since we're just working on kind of the developer side here, 
doesn't matter, make the secret key whatever you want. Obviously I'm showing you mine, it's not that important. All right, so now that we have that, what we're going to do is we're going to return this app. So we're gonna say return app. So we have now created a Flask application. We've initialized its secret key, then we've returned it from this function. All right, so now that we have that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to our main.py file, which is outside of this website folder, and we're going to import this website package grab that create app function that we just defined and then use that to actually well create an application and run it. So we're going to start by saying uh, from website import and then create underscore app. The reason we can do this is because website is a Python package. So whenever you put this init.py file inside of a folder, it becomes a Python package, which means when you import the name of the folder, it will by default run all of the stuff in the init.py file which means we can import anything that's defined in this init.py file, like our create app. So from main.py, we can use create app. So we're going to say app equals create app. And then we're going to say if underscore underscore name, underscore underscore equals underscore underscore main, underscore underscore. And then we're going to say app dot run debug equals true. Now this is as easy as it is to run a Flask application. This will work. We will now have a running web server and I'll show you in one second. But what this line says is that only if we run this file, not if we import this file, so main.py, are we going to execute this line. The reason you want this is because if for some reason you were to import main.py from another file and you didn't have this line right here, it would run the web server. And you don't want that to happen. You only want it to run the web server if you actually uh, run this file directly. So that's what this line means. Now what app.run is going to do is it's going to run our Flask application, it's going to start up a web server, and it's going to say debug equals true, which means every time we make a change to any of our Python code, it's going to automatically rerun the web server. That's all that debug equals true means. Obviously, you're going to turn that off when you're running in production, uh, but for our cases, we want that on.
my god. Are you kidding me? Is that all I had to do? Enter the path? Hmm. Oh, I didn't install it. Maybe I want it to be this one. The Python path in my debug configuration is invalid.
one because that means we don't have to keep manually re running the uh, last web server. Awesome. So this is like the entry point for our app. So what we can actually do is I, I need to fix my Python interpreter first. And in fact, I'll show you how to do this in case you're in VS Code and you're having some issues with Flask. Mm -hmm. uh, if for some reason, you know, it's saying Flask module is not found or you, you just you can't use Flask. In fact, I'll show you if I run this file, uh, notice I get this error, no module named Flask. Your Python interpreter is probably just wrong. Now it shows you the interpreter in the bottom left hand corner. If you want to change this interpreter, which is probably what you want to do, you're going to hit Control, Shift, and P on your keyboard. That's going to open up the VS Code command palette. And then inside of here, you're going to type Python and then select interpreter. And you can select your Python interpreter. So the one that I want to use is 3.8. three. Again, this is going to be specific to your local machine and the Python interpreters you have. But now that I select the correct interpreter, notice it changed down there, and I can run this file. So now that I run this file, It's funny to me because in my Blender video, I was like so excited to like do this. <laughs> I'm laughing, I'm laughing. Oh, here we go again with my laptop going crazy. Yes, code. Now, specifically me, myself, I don't like to use the built-in. the one that I used.
we were talking a little bit about some settings in VS Code, um, specifically with the Python extension uh, and executing some code inside of VS Code. Now, specifically me, myself, I don't like to use the built-in terminal. You can see down here I have this built-in terminal, right? And if I were to actually look at, you know, um, my actual terminal, right, and make it of a reasonable size so you all can see it, right? This terminal looks the exact same as my regular terminal, and in theory it should work the same, but it doesn't always, at least not until you adjust some of the settings. So. Um, when we're looking at this, after you've opened your first Python file in VS Code, it's going to ask you, do you want to install the Python extension? You absolutely should do that. It's going to give you text highlighting in Python uh, and give you the ability to execute Python inside of your VS Code. Right? And, and one of the things that it does is up here in the upper right hand corner, you can see it gives me this little play button. Now, if I hit this play button, now, I know when I used Conda to install my data science environment, right, my base environment that I see, I'm in my base environment down here, um, it, it came with pins, right? But if I clear out this and I hit play, right, it says there is no module named pandas. Well, I know that I do have pandas installed. And what's happening here is VS Code, the Python extension, is not looking at the correct version of Python to use, right? It's just choosing a Python installation somewhere on your machine, and it's using that. It's not using the Conda version. Specifically, the version that it's using is most likely, especially if you're on a Mac, a system that came with the operating system. And I say especially on Mac because the Mac OS actually uses both Python 2.7 and Python 3 to run some of the code for your operating system. So it comes pre-installed, at least to some level, with some of the basics, right? But not data science tools like pandas. So to fix this, we need to just adjust a couple of settings. We're going to preferences and then settings. Once I've gone here, um, it brings up a search bar. I'm gonna wanna search for environment. Mm -hmm. Once I've done that, right, I see under my extensions, there are six search results, all in the Python. Uh, all in the Python extension, right? There are six settings which involve the word environment in the Python, right? So I go to my Python extension settings. The first thing that I need to adjust, and it's the only setting in here, is this Python uh, terminal activate environment, right? This says activate the Python environment in terminal created using the extension, right? This is saying, I wanna use the extensions Python environment. That's in fact, not what I want to use at all. Um, I want to use my Conda environment very specifically. So we have to make sure that that box is unchecked, um, and that way it won't, um, you know, it, it won't actually, um, it, it won't actually use the wrong Python, at least until we um, select all. Um, I want to use my Conda environment. So we have to make sure that that box is unchecked, um, and that way it won't, um, you know, it, it won't actually, um, it, it won't actually use the wrong Python, at least until we um, select the right Python interpreter. You know, one one thing I was going to show you is, you know, you might you might see this error, no module named pandas, and think, oh, I need to install it. So if I say conda install pandas, right, it's gonna come up and, you know, the error that I'm gonna get is something along the lines of, um, hey, you already have pandas installed, so, so why are you doing this, right? Maybe there will be an update available. Um, it, it looks like, yeah, there are some updates available, right? And it, it will let me uh, install those updates. We can go ahead and do that really quickly, just get that updated. It'll finish up with this in just a moment, and then I'll try it again, right? But you you might say, okay, now I know for sure uh, Pandas is is uh, installed, and I click play, and it still says no module named Pandas, right? Still not looking at the correct Python interpreter, right? So the second thing we need to do is we need to select the correct uh, Python interpreter, 
right? Let me, I need to go back and double check that I left that setting right. I didn't re-click it or anything. Python, right? Make sure all three of my blocks is, are unclicked. They are. That's great. Right, the second setting I need to do is in the command palette. To get to the command palette on a Mac, you hit uh, command shift P on a Unix, I believe it's Control Shift B, but you might have to Google that real quick. Uh, you know, Linux, how to open Command Palette. Boom, it'll come up straight away, right? And what I'm going to type here is I'm looking for Python Select Interpreter, right? This is going to bring me up a list of all the Python installations that my computer has, right? Um, I have a 2.7 installation. I actually have two 2.7 installations. Um, one that was made available to the user. You can see user binary Python. And then one that was in the system folder, right? This is the, the one that the Mac OS, the operating system, is actually using, right? Then I have a couple. I actually have several Conda environments set up. I've got a 3.6 environment, I've got a 3.6.5 environment, you know. This again, right, you can see these are both in Anaconda 3, and they are associated <laughs> with Conda, right? I can see that these are Conda environments, right? As opposed to here, this 3.6.5 64-bit, right? This is a user local binary Python installation. So this either came with my machine or I later uh, uh, installed it. I have another one for 3.72 down here, another one for 3.8.2, right? And that you can see that I have a lot of different environments set up here, right? But there's one that I want to use specifically, and that is my base environment, right? So whatever list of environments you have here, so long as you're working in your base environment, you want to make sure that you choose your base environment in Python. Let me go ahead and bring that up again, right? And just double check that I have chosen the right I font, literally have right? no this environment. Is three binary Python. This is the one that I want, right? I see down here it's now telling me I can actually skip the command palette and just click down here um, to, to jump right to that. Um, sort of a old habit. Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode and today we will see how to create a virtual environment for Python from the Visual Studio code. So when we are talking about the term environment along with the Python, it is in a context 
which our Python application runs or say Python program runs. So an environment consists of an interpreter and all the installed packages, which clearly means that one can have multiple environments on a single machine. Or rather I would say every Python application can have its own environment setup. Now question is why do we need such environments? Well, you, environment is usually required to keep our applications and their respective packages isolated. And the reason behind this is quite simple. Let me give you an example. So let's say I have an application which is dealing mainly with the numbers. And for that, I have installed NumPy. But at the same time, I may have another application doing some analysis work. And for that application, I require some Azure packages. Now, I don't want to mix these two packages by keeping at single place as both of these are not required at the same time by the same applications, right? My one application is only interested in dealing with Azure packages, whereas other has nothing to do with Azure. Now, another good reason why we need environment is because of versioning. Now, it's quite obvious that one application is using older version of some package, whereas another application is running on the most recent to release version of the same package. So, in that case, managing such versioning and the dependency is not that easy. So, looking at these complexities, the concept of environment was introduced, which we can also see the virtual environment. So, with this much brief introduction and in this video, I will walk you through how we can create a virtual environment in VS Code. So this is my Visual Studio Code. I will quickly go ahead and open a folder. So I have already created an empty folder with the name Python Demo. I will navigate it. Okay, let's close this out. And here, I want to VS Code to know that I'm working on a Python application. So for that, I will create uh, an empty file. We can name it anything, utility.py. Right, so on the bottom, you can see there is one default environment which is associated with this application, and that is Windows Store. Now, I want my own environment so that I do not mess up with my existing projects or the applications right so for that i will quickly open a bash terminal and in this bash terminal we need to type a command like python minus m which is a switch then v e n v which is virtual environment and then we can give the name of our environment so we can give my demo environment so as soon as i will click enter added folder well so it is done as see and on the left hand side you can see that this is the newly added folder well so it is done and here are the three to four different folders and files got added so uh, it is not recommended to go and touch these files manually or to edit this file as these are automatically generated now next what we need to do is we need to tell that use this environment for this particular application so for doing that 
we need to activate our environment. So I will quickly write the path here and the activation script is basically available here which is activate.batch so the same thing I'm going to call it from here so my demo env and it is inside my scripts activate.batch so I have given the activation command next what we need to do is we need to associate interpreter so for that P. Otherwise, you can also go and click on this command palette and type here Python select interpreter. So, this is the first one which is coming over here. We'll click on that, and here we have already uh, existing environments. So,
Are you kidding me right now? Now it wants to pop out? Ridiculous. It's working now. So now if I go to desktop um main.py and then the virtual environment and then I should have How do I activate it? That doesn't make sense. Oh, but basically in this demo, I want to use my own environment. So I will go here and say, browse the interpreter which we want to use. So go here, scripts, and I will click on Python. So it is done. Activate dot Okay, so it's um what is this out? Terminal, new terminal. Okay, I don't know what do. Now we'll do demo e. Dot batch. So I have given the activation command. Next, what we need to do is we need to associate interpreter so for that p otherwise you can also go and click on this command palette and type here python select interpreter so this is the first one which is coming over here we'll click on that and here we have already uh, existing environment I'm so confused right now. Can't I just copy the activation link from over here? It's literally right here. This one. Um, where's the demo? Demo. Demo. Scripts. Activate that. Oh, is that what she said? I thought it was but instead of that. Oh, I'm so blind. Okay, so it's stem. What the? What's going on? Okay, let's do new terminal. Okay, so I'm gonna do demo e, and it was um, scripts activate dot bat. Why can't I just take it from here? That's the path right there. Oh no. Um. I'm so confused. Alright, so it's supposed to be scripts and activate dot path. Okay, so we'll write that. So. Supposed to be 
demo e scripts activate dot bat and then it's also let me just see um yeah that's what it's supposed to be okay so click enter um that should occur and then when i go to control shift p and do python select interpreter but then python from default print procedure this one then it should appear here Okay, so what if I want to do pi m pip install pi m if oh now it's fast last requirement already set up so I think I already have it. Interesting. So if I were to go and from flask import flask could I do that? What's the problem? The same hacking problem, bro. I can't. Um I think I'm done for today. I just can't do this anymore. I'm literally exhausted. I could have downloaded this from the Windows Store. It's crazy. And so, but basically in this demo, I want to use my own environment. So I will go here and say new environment's name, which is my demo now. Same problem though, so that's not great. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna stop because I'm not, I'm not okay right now. <laughs> I just, I can't do this anymore.